Hey everybody, I'm Mama Baird and welcome back to the channel. Today I have another food bank haul for you. Now this is our local food bank. We're allowed to go once a day if we need to. I like to go once a week. We've actually had a super bad round of sickness at my house. Like my kids each got hand, foot, and mouth. And I don't know if my husband got it, but he kind of got the same thing as them with super red, raw throat where you can't even swallow, just coughing, green snot coming out. Like, ugh. I'm very fortunate, knock on wood. This might be wood. Very fortunate to not have gotten it yet. And everybody is feeling better now that it's Christmas time. Oh yeah, Merry Christmas to everybody out there. I hope you guys have a wonderful day and just enjoy spending time with each other and try to stay out of the kitchen because you know they're always wanting you to stay in the kitchen and cook. I know I'm gonna be making something for Christmas dinner. We are going to be doing a Chinese theme for Christmas this year. I really like the idea of trying different kind of cuisines for Christmas instead of having a straight every year you make the same thing. So I'm going to be making homemade Chinese food. So I'm gonna be making orange chicken, sesame broccoli, fried rice, and homemade crab ragoon. So I'm gonna be making that. I am gonna be posting that later after Christmas because it's gonna be like a Christmas special of what we did all for Christmas, but it is gonna come after Christmas, so deal with it. <laughs> Before I get into our food bank haul though, I do wanna talk a little bit about a product review I'm gonna be doing. This is Zoko's under cabinet lighting. Now this is really awesome because it can be used as a sensor or it can be on all the time and it's rechargeable. So let me show you a little bit about this. So a little behind the scenes sneak peek at what I do with my setup. I have this double light here that has a ring to it. You see a lot of us influencers using these, you know. So in order to get view here of my cabinet, I gotta put this here, I gotta put this down here and hope that it all can be seen. And then I come over here and I stick this in my face and I'm like, hi, I didn't get, that's why I get my bright eyes is from those rings. But if you notice over here, it's really dark and dim. Like even with all of my lights on right now, it's really hard to see in this corner. So I have one of these under here and you just flip it on. And look at that, doesn't that look so much better? So now you can really see everything that I'm doing. So they sent me a two pack, which is nice. Thank you very much for that. Here's a little USB cord. It just takes USB C cord to charge it. So that is pretty great. And then it comes just like this. And then it has magnetics that you put on it. <laughs> Good thing that was magnetic. <laughs> that sticks on and off so you can put it up, take it down, put it up, take it down. So that way you can charge it and stuff. You don't have to be near a charger because you can take this down like so, and then just, oh, gotta find the hole, there we go. And just put it right back up. These also have a sensor on them, so you can put them against the wall or the bathroom, and that way if the kids get up in the middle of the night and they walk by it, then it'll turn on. So that's where the auto, you can put it on auto, and then you can have it on as well, and then you press this little sensor here and it changes the lights on you. So you can determine, this is the one I like. This works great for cameras if you're an influencer. You know, if you're an influencer. This works great for your cameras or you can do more of a warm light like this if you just want something kind of in the background with not a lot of bright light. Or you can take it and, or you press it and it does all, any kind of combination between the two. So that's really cool. So I'm gonna go ahead and put this up and use both of them for my kitchen because it really needs a lot of lighting in here. This is where I do a lot of my prep work here in this corner of my kitchen. So this is where I've decided I need the most lights. So let's get in here and I'll show you how easy this is to put up. Okay, so all I'm going to do, I have this matched up. I'm just gonna take the sticky part off, right? So the sticky part is off and then I'm just going to put it right here. I would say right there. Here we go. And now it is up. Guess it would work better if I switch it over to where the switch is. And then turn it on. And there we go. So now you can really see in this corner. You can see over here. You can have them on. I could probably even turn these lights off now. Let's give that a try. Turning my big lights off. And then I have some lighting under there. So even if I don't want my big lights on, I can now see in my counter. And this would be great for a night light just to leave this on. Lately I've been leaving one of my big lights on. It does make a big difference. I won't have to have these quite so bright on me, but they do make a difference when I'm talking to you guys, you know. 
So thank you for Ahsoka for sending me these lights. I'm really looking forward to being able to see <laughs> in my kitchen. Of course, you guys know that I got you a discount as well. So these are linked below. Go check these out. This makes a great gift for your person in the kitchen who needs some extra lighting or for your kids who need that little extra bit of lighting when they go in the bed and when they start going to the bathroom and stuff. So I hope you give those a try. Let me know if you do. All right, so let's get into the haul. You already kind of saw what I got, but I got a major surprise for you guys. So let's get in here and I'll show you what I got. Guys, I'm gonna start here with a little of the dry goods. They had a bunch of these Kirkland Ultra Clean ones, which this makes really good if you're going camping or just to have an extra in case you run out, you have a little one to be like, oh yeah, at least I have this one as a backup until you can get more. So I grabbed one of these. They had bar of soap, which I have switched to bar of soap because it's a lot cheaper and just more economical. So I liked up. So I grabbed that one. And then they had a bunch of toothbrushes as well as toothpaste. So I grabbed one toothpaste just for husband and I to have a backup as well. And then they had lots of baby wipes, which we've been meaning to get baby wipes because we like to use them to clean stuff off and just to have for grimy fingers and stuff, even though our kids are no longer in diapers. And they always have diapers at the food bank as well, guys. They always have like one through five, the sizes, and you can get one pack of diapers every time you go. So that's really nice if you need to get diapers. They have them at the local food bank as well, at least with mine. And then you were able to get one drink and I got this classic lemonade because I like lemonade. And over here in the pantry items, they did have oatmeal, but as you can see, it's two different types. Like this is the quick oats. Can you see how this is a little smaller? And these are the old fashioned oats, which are better for baking. And these are better for oatmeal. So it's good to be able to identify what kind of oat you're looking at, even if it's not labeled. So the smaller ones are the quick fix and the other ones are the old fashioned, which are better for baking. So I grabbed one of each. And then for the canned goods, they had this crushed tomato, which I'm planning on making some venison spaghetti sauce. So I'm going to throw that in there. And then they had two cans of baked beans, Bush's beans. They had the hickory and then just classic. And it's always good to have some baked beans. Guys, that's too loud. It's always good to have some baked beans. I have not mastered the art of making my own baked beans, so it's good to have these as a backup until you can learn that. I don't have many backups of sliced carrots, so I grabbed two of those. And then in the extra bin, they had some of this Pete's Organic Dark Roast Coffee, which Dark Roast is our favorite. So that was really nice. It looks like it November 20th was its best by date, but I'm just gonna throw this in the freezer and it lasts for a long time in the freezer. All right, over here for the veggies. So this was a full one, but um, I got this food bank haul a couple of days ago and we have been eating off it. Like I said, we weren't feeling good. So even when I got home, I was not in the mood to film the food bank haul. So this was full, but my daughter has gone through this. She loves cherry tomatoes so much. And she always gets mad at me if I do not come home with them. She's like, you should have stopped at the store then. <laughs> so these were from the Costco ones and they were the variety gourmet blend. So she's already, she'll probably polish this off today. That's two days worth of eating tomatoes. She just eats that as a snack. And then they had some of this broccoli coleslaw. I don't know if maybe I can cook this up and add it for my Christmas dinner. Maybe I can make, I don't know, maybe I can do lo mein instead of fried rice and use this for the lo mein. I don't know, what do you guys think? For my sweet treat, we had some cranberry orange uh, biscottis it looks like, just kind of like scones or biscuits. So that'll be good. Not, look at all that sugar on there, oh yeah, that'll be good. And then we got two bunches of bananas. They have been eaten through the bananas. So we have those left. And then I got a variety bag of produce here. Just a couple little things of broccoli to finish off for my dinner. We got some bell peppers and some limes and lemons. Well, limes and lemons. <laughs> so that'll be nice to have those as whatever we need an acid for. We can juice these. And I just usually like to keep these in the fridge and they last a pretty long time. For our milk, they did have some of this handcrafted in Seattle, Elenos, unsweetened plain yogurt. And this is thick. Like you can do the blizzard test on this and it's not going anywhere. So this is really nice. You can use this in replace of sour cream. You can add it in potatoes. 
Um, all kinds of stuff you can do with plain yogurt. You can use it as a marinade for chicken. So this is really good to have and it looks like it was on sale for $8.99 or marked down or that's how much it was. So this is a $9 thing of yogurt for 16 ounces. That's just crazy. But it looks like really good quality. And then they did have 2% milk, which is our favorite milk, but um, like I said, we've already been drinking through it and it goes out on the 25th, which remember, that's just a Best Buy gate. Like this is a sell-by, they have to sell it by this date, but it's not when it goes bad. So try and keep that in mind when you get milk and it's a little close to the expiration date. And then for the bread, I grabbed this brioche because this brioche bread makes fantastic French toast, guys. And French toast is one of those things where I will make a bunch of it and keep it in the freezer. So that way if I need something fast for breakfast, I just throw in some French toast in the toaster oven. And then we also got a thing of bagels, but we've been eating off it, obviously. So we got some cinnamon raisin, which are really good. All right, let me go get the protein I got for the week. Here it is, guys. Bacon in pieces, rubbed with pepper, so it's pepper bacon, and that's a 40 pounds. So another 40 pound case of bacon I just got. I just recently received one case of bacon just like this that was 40 pounds and it was the peppered ends. And I know you're thinking, why did you get another one then? This was the only protein they had available. They had about 40 cases, 40 boxes of this. We do have a bacon plant here in Missoula. So that's how we get so much bacon donated at the food bank is that whenever they're done with these cases. I've also gotten sliced hickory smoked bacon from there as well. That was about a year ago. And I went through all that bacon, and then I went through about a third of the peppered bacon that I already have. I also portioned it and gave a lot of it to my family members as well. So since I recently found a deep freeze for sale on Marketplace that was a good price, I have the freezer space for this now. Another reason that I chose to get this is because we do a lot of hunting where we can get elk or deer, and that is very lean meat, and you need some kind of fat in that to help beef it up and to make it a little healthier because your body needs that fat. So if you live strictly off of lean meat, then you could actually starve to death because you're not giving your body the fat it needs to survive. So that's why they say like when you just eat rabbit, if you only eat straight rabbit and nothing else, then you can starve to death because rabbit is also a very lean meat. So this bacon will go great to help beef up my elk that I got. I'm gonna get, hopefully I'll get a grinder for Christmas, you know, so I will be able to grind this meat and we can make sauces out of this. I can render the fat. Last time you guys did suggest that I rinse some of the pepper off and I think I'm gonna do that this time because it was a little spicy for my kids. Even if I just use the bacon grease that was peppered, it's a little spicy, they can taste it. Wimps. But let's crack this open so you can kind of see what I'm talking about and the challenge I have ahead of me. If you missed that last video where I received this, I did a review on a vacuum sealer and um, I can link that below so you can see how I cooked and vacuum sealed a whole case last time. Let me get a knife here. All right, let's get in here. So as you can see, this is one solid frozen clump. So I'm going to have to thaw this whole case and then I'll be able to portion it and then refreeze it. It is okay to thaw meat out and then cut it, cook it, whatever, and then refreeze it. So if you have apprehensions about refreezing meat after it's frozen, it's totally okay. As long as you thaw the meat correctly, so you thaw it in the fridge or you do the cold running water method, then you can refreeze meat. So if you take meat out of the freezer and put it in your fridge and then a couple days later, you're like, you know what, I'm not gonna use this like I thought, and you put it back in the freezer, that's okay. So that's the challenge I have ahead of myself. For now though, I'm just gonna put this in my freezer and I will deal with this at another time. Um, but this is great to know that I have 40 pounds of bacon in my freezer ready to go, especially if we are hunting and we get another animal, then we can help throw this into the mix and really stretch our budget. So I just want to take a moment and thank the food bank for offering this and giving my family the ability to have the fat and the protein that we need to survive because without them, I would never be able to get this at all. If you have any ideas in what I can do with all this bacon, please let me know in the comments below. I would love some suggestions and get some feedback on what you guys would do with 40 pounds of bacon. So stick around because I'm gonna go put this in the freezer and then I'm whipping up some lunch. Hmm, I wonder what I'm gonna make. 
Another thing I received from the food bank this time are some wilted plants. Now, the roots still seem fine because they got, they didn't freeze, but like the outside leaves and stuff got a little frozen. So they're just a little sad, but the roots are totally fine. So they were handing out, they had like 30 of these. Um, you can tell a little bit by the tag what kind they are. I don't have either of these two plants, so I'm excited to try them. A little bit of a green thumb. I have some elephant ears that I've kept alive for like three years now, so that's a big achievement for me. But with these, my kind of my thought on these is just to trim off the wilted leaves, um, and hopefully it'll regrow. Oh, you can see right here. See that? She's got a new leaf coming. So this one's still alive. That's my idea. Any green thumb gardeners out there, with, is that what you would do too? Is just to cut off any of the dead ones and just let them start fresh. Please let me know on the best possible way to save these. Should I repot them or are they fine as is until spring? So let me know. So this was definitely a nice bonus at the food bank. And I love it when they have things like this that they give to the community instead of throwing them away. So this is great that they offer this. Hey everybody. So we are back and I am going to be cooking up some grub utilizing my food bank haul that I got. Now, I don't know if you've heard of this dish. I have never made it before, but we're trying it today together. And I'm making cowboy beans. I'm sorry. <clears throat> and I'm making cowboy beans. Was that, was that good? Was that bad? Okay. <laughs> Please don't judge me. Okay. So I just printed off a recipe. This is from Simply Happy Foodie. And it's a Instant Pot. Cowboy beans. Now, the main difference is that you're using Bush's baked beans and you are kind of extending it. So you usually add hamburger. I happen to have some venison, which is deer meat thawed. So I'm gonna be using that. Now, instead of using kielbasa, which is usually what you use for this recipe, I'm gonna be using some Italian pork sausage, which is also what I had thawed. I was just picking stuff out of my freezer and I needed to use those up and I didn't really have a dish in mind. So I already cooked the Italian sausage and the venison together. And then all the rest of it, I have my ingredients all out. I got my handy dandy recipe book, well, recipe page. <laughs> and uh, we're gonna get this Instant Pot and get it going because those kids are hungry and I can only hold them off for so long. So let's get in here. Hi, if you're new here, I'm Carolina and I live in Montana. I do a lot of food bank hauls, pantry cooking, and canning and preserving on my channel. If that's the kind of content you're into, I hope you consider subscribing. I would love to have you join my family. I also have a list of resources listed below. If any of you guys are needing food, please consider going to your local food bank. There's lots of churches that do food giveaways. You can dial 211 on your phone and that will lead you to any resources that you need for some food. Times are tight for everybody right now and especially around this holiday season. So please don't feel bad, don't feel ashamed, don't feel nervous if you need to go to the food bank. Even if you're a working family who has a house and a car and you're working two jobs but you're just barely making it by, please consider going to your local food bank. So please check out those resources if you need them, okay? Or if you know somebody in need of food, please help point them in the right direction. All right, so let's get into these cowboy beans. All right, first thing we're going to do is press this to saute, and we're just gonna leave it on 30 so it'll just start firing up. And I have a little bit of garlic oil here. This is the oil. Here's the garlic that I cooked in the olive oil here. This is avocado and olive oil. So I cooked this garlic in the oil, strained off the oil, and then have the garlic here. I'm actually gonna break this down into pints and put some in my freezer so it'll last longer. And I will be doing another video on this. This is a highly requested item from you guys on how to do this. So I have it planned to do a small batch for you so you can see how to do it. But this is what I'm gonna be using. And I'm gonna start off with some of the garlic oil in there. A couple of tablespoons. And then I have some pre-cut onion and I cut up one of those bell peppers. And I like to have that just in my fridge. And then this recipe calls for raw bacon. I do have some of my cooked peppered bacon that I did last time. And I have this just portioned in a snack bag and in my freezer. So if I need cooked bacon, I can pretty much cook this from frozen. It's ready to go. And I don't have to dice and cook it. So this, I noticed with having bacon prepped like this, it makes you use it more. Or having onions and peppers prepped in your fridge ready to go, you're more likely to include those in a recipe because you don't have to take the time to stop and cook them. So I'm gonna do about half this onion, this bell pepper, 
And then I'm just going to combine them into one, like that. And then this can go in my fridge, and I will use this for another meal. All right, we got some sizzling going. So if you had raw ground beef at your at the time, this would be the opportunity for you to be cooking it here. Just use the saute on your Instant Pot. I just went ahead and pre-cooked it because I had more meat than I'm going to include in this. So I cooked it separate. So then I'll just have some extra ground beef. Well, it's actually ground venison. Um, I just call it beef. If I continue to call it ground beef, just know it's venison. Um, you cook it just like beef, honestly, guys. Like anything you use ground beef, you can use ground venison, elk, bison, antelope, all that stuff. People actually eat that stuff. They hunt it, and that's what we're trying to do. So we're going to be using venison in this recipe. I'm going to add a little bit of my garlic, a couple of cloves. Now this garlic is pre-cooked, so it'll just mash up. As soon as it starts heating up, it'll just mash and it'll become like a garlic paste. It's really good. All right, and then we're gonna add in our bacon. I'm just doing about a cup of bacon. This is peppered bacon. In honor of my new peppered bacon, my more peppered bacon I just got. So you could already see how much pepper was on that. That's why I'm thinking I'm going to rinse some of it this time. I right, know normally you would add chili powder to this. Um, I'm skipping that step though because my mustard I'm adding is chipotle mustard. So that has a little spice. And the barbecue sauce I'm adding is sweet and zesty. So that has a little spice. But I am going to add a little smoked paprika at this point. And if you add your spices before you add all your liquids and add them in the oil, it's got to be in an oil. And then it'll help activate the oils in the spice. And it'll just increase their flavor so much, guys. It's like a whole different depth of flavor when you toast your spices. Alright, so I'm just going to turn this off. Alright, so we're going to add two-thirds cup of water. And then that's going to help deglaze the bottom if we have any crusty bits. Okay. So I'm going to add about two pounds of this. This is a little over three pounds cooked, so that will be my leftover. Okay, I'm going to add a can of grain rinsed kidney beans. And then let me open up my baked beans. All right, so this is the brown sugar hickory. Now if you don't have baked beans, you can always use Pork and beans is a good one. Or just any of like, I don't know, chili beans would probably work for this too. You know, just anytime you see someone else doing a recipe, just take it with a grain of salt and just know that you can adapt it to anything you have in your pantry, in your cupboards. Something that you like. If you don't like red beans, you want to do black beans, use that. Like it doesn't have to be perfect by recipe, guys. All right, so beans in there, check. Next is half a cup of ketchup. I have some of this that I have. I'm just gonna use all of this up. And since this is a reusable cap, I can wash this and then make my own ketchup and water bath this myself and reuse this jar. All right, half a cup of barbecue sauce. Here's the Dijon mustard. One and a half tablespoons. So I'm just going to use the last of this. It's been around for a while. I'm in a third of a cup of molasses. Uh-oh. It's sticky shut. Can't get it up there. Oh my gosh. Okay. Wow, where's the husband when you need him? Ooh, I got it. All right, if that ever happens to you guys, I just ran this under some hot water, and that worked great. And I'm going to make sure I clean the sides really good before I close it back up. So I'm going to do a third of a cup of molasses. I'm just going to eyeball it because everything else is sticky. And then I'm going to do a teaspoon of liquid smoke. Liquid smoke, it's just, I don't know, it's just uh, liquid smoke. Like, 
it just gives it like a little smoky flavor like it's been on a barbecue or something so i'm just going to do a teaspoon of that just a couple sprinkles that is not necessary okay. mix it up a bit okay and we're just going to push it down it actually said don't stir whoops <laughs> so you're not supposed to stir it just push everything down this won't give us the burn notice all right put our lid on her and this is going to pressure cook for eight minutes okay and then after that we're going to let it natural release for 15 minutes and then it should be done all right our timer just went off for the 15 minutes so we're going to release any more pressure no. <laughs> it's, it's not okay. Whoa. Go. Let's get on in here. Look at this. Oh, that looks so good. It's just like elevated baked beans with some meat in there. So I'm gonna get a bowl going. Yeah? Huh? Huh? What do you think? Looks pretty good. Anybody else made these before? I have never heard of these before. But it looked really good, and I happened to get big beans in my haul, and I happened to have meat thawed. Now, you could also use any cooked frozen meat if you do that. If you cook meat in advance, freeze it, keep it in your freezer. That way, all you have to do is add the frozen meat to it, and then this would be super easy. Or if you canned meat, you can add canned meat to this as well. I saw one recipe that had corn in it. That would be good. I like corn and stuff. Oh, that's so good. Mmm, holy moly. It's really, really sweet. I mean, not like super sweet, but the baked beans, like it has that baked bean flavor. This is not too spicy at all. I probably would add a little bit chili powder now knowing what it tastes like, but that's okay. The kids will eat this up. Man, so have you guys tried this before? Let me know. I hope you give that a try. I really appreciate you spending time with me, especially today on Christmas. If you guys are watching this as soon as I post it, thank you so much, guys. I love you so much. I hope you guys have a fantastic Christmas. Let me know in the comments what kind of goodies you got below. And I just want to emphasize one more time that if you need help and you need to get some food, please don't hesitate to check out the resources below and go get some help, guys. All right, there's lots of food banks that they literally just throw food away because they have so much of it and people don't come because they think they don't qualify. They think they don't deserve it. They think there's other people out there who need it more than them. And that's just not true. You deserve to have help too, all right? You deserve to get a break and to go get food that normally would have ended up in a dumpster. And if you're in the situation where you don't need the food bank right now and you're wondering what you can do to give back to them, they're always looking for volunteers or cash donations. They can do a lot with money. If you don't have food that you can give them, just give them some money. That really helps a lot too. Thank you so much for watching, guys. I hope you have a very Merry Christmas from my family to yours. And I'll catch you next time on Mama Bears. Mm -hmm.